theater stage players feel it would be a bit unkind to present this play without one word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told, and it deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. And it might even horrify you. So, if you prefer not to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, well, we warned you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, this will be 
keep our little secret, would you? Yes, indeed. Go have a rest over at Banks. Leave us with our friend. Thank you, sir. We should appreciate this. Yes, Herr. Oh, your name, sir. Did you say? No. I did not. Names are not important at times like this. Oh, no, sir. Go. Please. Leave us. Yes, sir. Oh, Pippa, it's nothing. And how grateful they are, as we all are, especially me. 
Oh, now, Elizabeth, you brought such joy into our lives. When I first came to live here with my brother, I thought I was going to end up the usual baby aunt, taking care of and being taken care of. But then my brother took you on as his ward, and you brought sunshine into this house. You embarrassed me. Now, with my brother gone, and I myself in charge of everything, I realize how strangely life can treat one. I shall always look upon you as mother I never knew. And when your marriage takes place... Now, none of that, aunt. You shall stay here after Victor and I are married. You are part of the family. This is much your home as it is mine, and I know Victor agrees. I had always hoped, as had my brother, that you and Victor would join in matrimony, but I want to make sure it is how you feel. Of course it is. You know it is. We have been destined for this wedding since our first meeting, when he was ten and I was three, and he threw me into that mud puddle. I knew it was not but love. But I have often wondered. What? Wondered what? If perhaps Henry, I mean, you three when you were young, and then Henry went off to university and... Oh, never mind. I shouldn't have brought it up at all. Except oh. I just wanted... You're so subtle. Am I? Yes. Yeah. I believe Henry was, what term should I use? Infatuated with me. Does that sound conceited? No, dear, just truthful. And we three grew up together, and with him living so close by. But then he went off for those years of studying. When he returned, it was as if we were meeting for the first time. You being young and pretty. And available. Made you that much more desirable, I see. Yes. Yeah. Henry will always be our best friend. I know he will. And your feelings for him? That of a very good friend. I wish Victor would come back, perhaps for dinner. Do you think so? He's been spending so much time up there. Why can he not have his laboratory here in the house? In the East Wing, for instance. But no, he has to have it way up there atop that mountain. And the way the townspeople talk about the wagon loads of equipment that are hauled up there almost daily. What does it all mean? I don't know. But Victor says when this experiment, as he calls it, is completed, he will be famous. The world will be at our feet. I don't want the world, aunt. I don't want marriage, a home, and children. I know, my dear. He has changed so of late. What do you think is really going on up there? I don't know. In some ways, I don't want to know. But I feel I must find out. Oh, Victor. What experiment are you doing way up there in that laboratory? We need no 
more. We're complete. <coughs> yes, someone is there. It is two people. I must finish this. Send them away. Away. Go away. Get out. Victor, Victor. Are you there? It's Elizabeth. Go away, Elizabeth. I'm here with Aunt Frederica. We came by <coughs> carriage. Elizabeth, I told you not to come here. Victor, please. We are worried about you. Are you ill? We've not seen you in so long. I'm fine. I'm almost finished with my experiment. What is it? What are you doing, Victor? Send them away. They must go away. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be home shortly. Can we not come in? Can we not see what you are doing? Yes, let us in, please. No! No! Not in here. Never in here. We're coming in! No! The door is bolted! No. Go away! Victor! Go! Victor! In the name of God! Go! Igor. Stand by me. Yes, Master. Damn women. You should stay where they belong. Interfering with this? They have no right. They are leaving, Master. The, the carriage is going back down the hill. Good. You told them, Master. I fear I was too strong. But they must understand. Elizabeth is to be my wife. She must be made to understand. When she sees my friend here, she will understand. And the world will understand. When my friend gets his brain... The brain! It must remain intact. It must not deteriorate. It is perfect. There it is. The final piece in our puzzle. Just as good as the day we got it, Ego. The brain of an intelligent human being. And soon? The brain of my friend. When the storm comes, this will be implanted, and he will live. My friend will live. The body will live. I will have created life. I will have gone beyond mankind's bounds. I shall step into the infinite mystery of life. Which have not been overly informative. I 
thought perhaps you knew more. I know nothing of his work. He does not confide in me. He's becoming a stranger. Henry, I'm so worried. But everything is all right between you two, is it not? The marriage, it is still going to take place. Yes, yes, of course. In due time. But I thought it was to be the spring. And so it was. But it seems experiments have taken precedence. Over your marriage? I don't believe this will be. And you don't understand. I understand that we have both been in love with him since the day we first met. Henry, don't. Victor won your heart. That I know. And I stepped aside as best I could. But now, what is he thinking to postpone your wedding? Henry, we three have been as close as any people could be. You know that. And we have ignored any other feelings that may have grown throughout the years since Victor and I have been betrothed. Let us leave it that way, please, dear Henry. As you wish. But let me just say that if ever Victor mistreats you or your feelings for him alter, then I... I know. Aunt Frederica. Mm. May I still call you that? Of course. Bertha said there was a dashing gentleman in here, and that Elizabeth seemed all a Twitter, so I knew it was no one but Henry Lovett. Will you take tea with us? I will call Bertha. I was about to ask Elizabeth to go into the village with me. There was someone there I would like for her to meet. Someone visiting? Here in our village? A vacationer who may be able to shed some light on this change in Victor. Did Elizabeth tell you that we went to his laboratory the other day and he refused us entry? He raised his voice. He ordered us to leave. What has changed him so? Is he ill? He said he was well, but so very busy with whatever this experiment is. He's been spending days at a time up there with his assistant. Who's that? We've never met. We've only seen him from a distance. Victor rarely comes home, and when he does, he's so preoccupied we can hardly speak to him. I know he looks at me, but what he is seeing is elsewhere. It almost frightens me, Henry. It has been getting worse and worse. Ever since he left the university and started working on his own in Vienna, he has been getting less and less communicative. He told you he left the university those three years ago. That is what he led us to believe. He was asked to leave. That couldn't be. He was graduated with honors, and his research was going so well. The dean of science professors, Dr. Hellstrom, Talk to me about Victor, that he's potentially the greatest scientist in Europe today. Potentially. Yes, but instead of continuing his research, he went off on his own, delving into fields of experimentation he was not yet ready to explore. Oh, surely he knows what he's doing. Does he? That is the question in my mind. And in Dr. Hellstrom's. Do you think Victor might harm himself? Elizabeth, I told you there was someone I would like for you to meet. Yes. It is the very Dr. Hellstrom. Here in our village. He is on vacation. And I begged him to stop off at the hotel on his way to Valdeser. Victor respects himself. And I thought if the doctor talked to him, he might be able to find out what is going on. Do you think Victor will see this Dr. Hellstrom and perhaps even let him into his laboratory? He was his professor. I'm sure he will see him. Excuse me, ma'am. Should I bring tea for you and the nice gentleman? For me, please, Bertha. But I believe Miss Elizabeth and the nice gentleman are going into the hotel for this. That's too bad. I mean, yes, ma'am. Shall I bring in a cup for Mr. Victor? Victor? He's not here. Yes, miss. He's rummaging about a bit upstairs. Didn't you hear him come in? No, we didn't. Yes, Bertha, bring a cup for Victor. In fact, bring enough for all of us. Perhaps he will stay a while and we can catch up on things. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this is a godsend. Henry, perhaps you can make sense of what is going on. What has changed, Victor? Well, I shall certainly try. No, Berta. No tea. I cannot stay. But they're in there, Mr. Victor, with a new gentleman, a nice gentleman, a Mr. Lovett. Henry? Henry here? Yes, sir. Henry? Henry, where are you? Victor, Henry. so good to see you. My good friend Henry. I'm so delighted. Elizabeth, is this not a happy surprise? Yes, indeed. Sit down, Victor, and take tea with us. We've seen so little of you lately. No. I cannot stay. I, I must. Well, surely for a few minutes. Any other night, but not tonight. What is tonight? Tonight, there is to be a storm. Yes, I heard. A severe electrical storm. The grandfather of all storms. Then why go back up the mountain to your laboratory? Stay here. 
here with us. No. Tonight is to be the climax of my experience. History will be made of it. After tonight, life will be thought of quite differently. Victor, what is this experiment? Tell me, please. You make it sound so exciting. Oh, it is beyond exciting. It is daring to cross into the absolute unknown. Let me come. Let me be with you for this. No. No one must be there. I have my assistant. That's all I need. But I too could help. No! Just let me alone. All of you. Tonight is the night I, I've waited and worked for. But I must be alone. Alone! Victor, Victor, what has happened to you? <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, don't cry. Elizabeth, come into the village and meet this Dr. Hoskins. Yeah. Perhaps he can help. Yes. If the climax to his experiment is to be tonight, we must act quickly. Dr. Halston will know what to do. Come, Elizabeth, we must make haste. Thank God you're here, Henry. My carriage is ready outside. I'm ready, Henry. Let us hurry. Oh, Victor. Victor, be careful. I have tea already in the kitchen, but everyone seems to have gone except you. Uh, yes, Bertie. Just make one cup for me, please. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Miss Frederica? I'm not going out tonight, even if it is an evening off. Really? Yes. They say there is going to be a big storm. A great electric storm. And I'm frightened. Yes. The grandfather of all storms. <coughs>
now he will. Now I'm ready. Yes, Master. I will pray for you and for him. Pray? Dare we pray? Whatever you say, Master. I think not. We are entering a netherworld where prayer is unknown. Master, you frightened me. We are both frightened. But is not fear normal? There. I have made the first cut. We have started. The retractor. We had begun. Now there is no turning back. I must be with you, Henry. 
You of all people know how important this is for me. For us. Yes, I do. Come on, there is not a minute to lose. What is Victor doing? What's going on up there? We shall soon know. I pray it will be all right. Pray if you wish. I fear it may be too late for prayer. Come, hurry. Dr. Hellstrom, you will be 
interested to know that during my experimentation in that laboratory outside Vienna, I had a heart, a human heart. Don't ask from whence it came. I left the room for an instant when the entire room was illuminated by lightning. I rushed in. And the heart was beating. Beating, do you hear? It was only for a moment. But I knew. I knew then and there that there was a connection between the greatest electricity we know and life itself. So, I continued on the theory. And I arrived at this. It is a body put together from many bodies. It has never lived before in this form. But tonight, tonight, you will see it breathe life for the very first time. moments ago, I put in the final element, the brain. Oh, no. I bet you get this brain. Does it matter? Master, hurry. It was the brain of a good, decent man who died of natural causes.
The electricity's been transferred to the body. My friend? He lives. Did it work, Victor? Is that I? Stand back. Let me see.
Elizabeth. Is she resting comfortably? Yes, she's in there in her room with Dr. Hillstrom. He says there's no need for any more sedatives. It's just a remarkably strong young woman. But we knew that. Yes, of course. But I still don't know what happened in Victor's laboratory. He's hardly said a word in the two days since you carried Elizabeth back here. He goes up to the laboratory, stays for a few hours, comes back and sits out in the garden staring into space. What is it, Henry? I told you. It was an experiment which turned out rather differently than Victor had hoped. In those first few hours when Elizabeth was out of her head, she kept talking about it being alive. What did she mean by it? She was referring to, well, part of Victor's experiment. But creature, she said creature over and over again. She meant the... <sighs> what? We tell me. You must know by now, Victor was trying to accomplish Unthought of miracles. Yes, I have realized that. With such tests, one cannot always be certain of the outcome. The result was not what he expected. He proved his theory. But in some ways, the test was not successful. What ways, Henry? Tell me. I'm Elizabeth's guardian. I'm Victor's aunt. I'm not a child. Tell me. I must know. Victor has succeeded in a scientific breakthrough always thought impossible. But science these days, nothing seems impossible short of creating... Yes. Life itself. Has accomplished that. Our victor has created life? Created a living cell? Not only a cell. Then what? On Federica, he has brought life to a complete body. A person already pronounced dead? No, a person he made from parts of many cadavers. <sighs> but that's impossible. So we thought. Even Dr. Hellstrom doubted it could be done. <laughs> this creature, where is it now? In the laboratory, it's deeply sedated. We are just waiting for Victor to realize it must be destroyed. You cannot destroy it. Not if it is alive. It is not alive. Not as we know life. It is not a body with, what should I say, a soul. It has the brain of a man who had no conscience. It is not a human. It is not an animal. It was just a creature. Excuse me, <coughs> ma'am, but I'd best tell Kirk how it'll be for dinner. Um, the two of us, I'm sure, and Dr. Hellstrom. But Victor, I don't know about. He's in the garden. You'd best ask him. Yes, ma'am. Is he feeling all right? He looks very poorly. He's fine, Bertie. <laughs> it must be the comparison to you, sir. You look so healthy. <laughs> Thank you, Bertie. I'll ask Mr. Victor about dinner. Oh, and Miss Elizabeth will be joining you. Oh, no, she must rest. No, ma'am, I just helped her dress. She says she is feeling right proper. Oh, we're so glad to hear it. Queer turn she took. Wasn't it, sir? Yes, indeed. She keeps talking about another person, a strange man. Should I tell Cook this person might be joining you for dinner? <laughs> no, Bert. I hardly think so. Don't want anyone to suddenly pop in and surprise us, do we? Not this song. Thank you, sir. I'm so glad and more than a little surprised that Elizabeth is up and about. But Henry, if this creature is dangerous, should it be left alone up there? Even after the sedation wears off, it is well secured, believe me. And Victor's assistant is there to keep guard. I've only seen this helper once, but I fear he is not as well versed in science as Victor is. I am sure not. Well, there you are, my dear. Please, Dr. Hellstrom, I'm not going to fall over. I'm feeling quite strong. Are you sure you should get up? Yes, Helen. You had us very worried. I fear I was not prepared for the other evening. From what I hear, no one would have been. What do you hear? <coughs> Who's been telling you things he 
you shouldn't. I did, Victor. Aunt Frederica has a right to know what has happened. And I want to know what will happen, Victor. I'm not sure. I have crossed the threshold, and I cannot turn back. <laughs> Sure. 
It's so good to have you with us, Henry. Yes, so I have noticed. Peace. Peace and quiet are with us again. Alive. How much better? 
that's it, he'll be burned. But Dr. Halstrom, think of what we can learn from him. This, the very first creation of mankind. Does he think? Does he feel? Does he have emotions? Does he have a soul? We must find out more. He kills, that is all. Poor Igor. He tormented him because he was not perfection. But we are scientists, Doctor. We can study and learn. Is his heart rate as slow as it was before? Perhaps he's in a coma? No, his heart rate is... Ah! I'm sure he would be all right. He even seems a bit happy, doesn't he? Yes, 
was so strong. How long would this shot last? It would kill an ordinary man. But him, I'm not sure. A few hours, perhaps all night. What do you have to sleep with? We must destroy him. Bury him like we did Igor. Leave no trace of what has happened here. No one must know. Ever!
should not let you see me like this. It'll be all right. Now that the creature is gone, it'll be like it was before. Before? Can we ever go back? Can things ever be like they were? Elizabeth, you saw what I did. It revolted you. And I know. I cannot stop. I will keep going further and further into the unknown until... I cannot ask you to share such a life, can I? I have known for a long time that I am but a part of your life, and I accept that. <coughs> I fear I'm incapable of offering you more. I know. We three grew up together. You, me, Henry. It seems so natural that we would become engaged. Everyone expected. We do have love for one another. I know that. There is Henry, right? No, Victor, stop right there. Am I being selfish? In keeping you from a fuller life with him? No, no, please. I'm certain you have feelings for him. Mm -hmm. And I know he loves you. Never has a word passed between us that would indicate that we have more than a deep affection. Never, Victor, I assure you. Henry. I'm glad you heard. I've been trying to find the right moment just to step aside if that's what you both want. You must believe I've never approached Elizabeth in any way. I've seen the way you look at her. The way you talk to her. I know, Henry. I know, my friend. What I know is that I am to be the best man at your wedding. And I shall be so happy for both of you on that day. Thank you, Henry. I've always known what a true friend you were, but never more than at this moment. Let us speak no more about it. Come, why don't we not go out to the garden and get some color back in Elizabeth's cheek? No, Victor is too worried about Dr. Hellstrom. Would it make you feel better if we went to the laboratory to make sure he's all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it would. Go along, you two, and bring back some good news. We'll hurry. You rest, please. Wait. A word with both of you. I love you both very much. <coughs> I want to be sure you know that. We do. I'm afraid so, Berta. Just the one cup for me. Oh, Cook will be that upset. She will. She baked them nice little cakes. You all like so much. <coughs> Just bring me the cup, Berta, and why don't you have a cake or two? We won't tell Cook. Oh, thank you, miss. Take care, both of you. God be with you. Crushed. The 
creature. Where is it? I don't know. Could be anywhere by now. What could he be doing out there? Don't you see? He's looking for me. Why only you? He blames me for his very existence. That's why he attacked me before, once he realized what he was. He killed Igor, and now Dr. Hellstrom. He could be after everyone who was here when he was given life. That means you and me, and God, Elizabeth. Do you realize what this means? He thinks. He has emotions. He feels. Yes, he feels revenge. That is what he's seeking now. But he wouldn't harm anyone he didn't know, would he? No. I believe he is just after us. Unless. Unless what? Unless someone angers him. Then who knows what he might do. He's out there. Alone. A creature with no conscience. Where is he? What is he doing? It is 
to body buried in the woods if that is what Yelma saw. And, and all those strange noises coming from the laboratory, what are they? And in the woods, I've heard strange sounds myself. Odd sounds like moans and screams. Nothing of this earth, I know that. I tell you, there's, there's some kind of animal Frankenstein is doing his experiments on. Uh, some kind of vile creature. And it's escaped. <laughs> Escape the beast in our woods? Oh, I'm sure of it. Who's that coming? It's Corda. What is he carrying? Saints preserve us. It's Maria. It's his daughter. Oh my God. <laughs> she is dead. My Maria is dead. How? Corda, what happened? Some monster. Some. Wild animal, I do not know. I heard screams, I keep running. Mama Rio was lying there, her neck broken. Who could have done such a thing? Oh, I heard noises. I saw it stumbling away. What was it? I don't know. It was too far away. It was just something. It was just some thing. Of his birth. I'm sure of it. I'll come with you. 
No. I started this alone. I must finish it alone. Besides, I'm well on. I will end my experiment. You take care of Elizabeth. Always. That's why you came back here. You can think. You can reason. So you must know the end is inevitable. You have done evil. Or does what we do go on after we are gone? He 
He destroyed the evil. It is gone forever. I wonder. Thank you. 